We're listening to the This Life Podcast with Dr. Drew Pinsky and me, Mike Catherwood. That's right. We're doing it this time. So check it out. Thanks for listening. You live. Hey, welcome to another This Life Podcast. Hashtag you live. Don't forget to check out Google hashtag you live and it will get you to all the latest podcast posts and news on your browser, uh, right there on your browser. Just hashtag you live. And I'll tell you more things at the end of the show, how to find us. But right now, Mike Catherwood in yeah. here. Yeah. Hey, buddy. What's happening? Oh, live, life is good. I know you're very excited to speak to our guest. I'm probably more excited than I've ever been to interview anyone. Patricia Krenzel, welcome. Listen, better known as, of course. Welcome to and, you um, and everyone. And thank you. I'm very honored to be with Susan and Drew and you and I'm very happy, happy to be here. You may not know this, here. Mike, but uh, Patricia and Susan have become best friends. I, they, uh, it's what I hear. They are, they it's are, what I hear. They are FaceTime. I baby. really, really like her. I, Thank yeah. you. A lot. Lesbian, I saw you def- lesbian sex? What I, do you think? She did a calling, calling out with Susan Pinsky. But did you see that, Patricia, I saw you defending Susan on Twitter today. Yes. What, Why? What happened? What happened? Oh, what did someone say? Someone said something about Susan, and I'm just like... You don't even know her, and <laughs> I just, I'm like, well, it it actually stems back to, act inadvertently, um, Phil, Dr. Phil, oh, a.k.a. My Dr. Phil. Uh, and somebody made a comment, and I'm like, they said something in that, forgive my mouth at the moment, uh, the two things, in that derogatory um, about Susan. And I said, and then it went back to Dr. Drew uh-huh. because we did a cast and with Susan, obviously it's her show. And um, it went back and they were trying to backstab Dr. Drew and it went back to Susan. And I'm like, the girl is the best intelligent Funny, I love beautiful it. woman. Ugh, this is why we're best friends. I know it's good. She's your she's your protector. What are you <laughs> wearing right now, uh, Patricia? I'm back on the fur. <laughs> the fur. <laughs> you're you're wearing fur. I wish we had this on video. Well, <laughs> I'm not going out at the moment. But I do have company downstairs. So right. I like I like furs. And you're, tank we- top. you're wearing a fur coat and a tank top. And what's uh, what's the weather like where you're at? Right now, it's, um, well, in my very old house, it's about negative 10. So, um, I'm only kidding, not. So, yeah, uh, it's like 50 almost over here. Crazy. All right. Well, it's the fur coat weather if I ever heard of it. So, Mike is a big fan of yours. Uh, he's a Stern Show fan. He became, yeah. Uh, he was also used to be on my HLM program, if you remember, uh, Patricia, back when you used to be on. And, and I was telling him about your story. And I would hope you don't mind going through it again. Your story about being thrown down the well and the bar fight and all this stuff. Could you could you walk us through that again? Do I really have to? Well, I, you don't have to go into detail. I, I was just trying to explain to people. I, I, the, the, I'm a little vague about what happened when you were thrown down the well when you were in your it was in your, like your young twenties, right? In my twenties, I just just quick. I'm gonna just. Yeah. yeah, go through chasers. Okay. Um, when I was pregnant, I got punched in the face, and I was proclaimed dead twice. Then later in life, um, I, this guy threw me down in a well when I sat there for over a week and change. What have you? I Wait, mean, now, did like he just, co- like, see you walking and picked you up and threw you in a well, or did you have a relationship with this she, guy? He was kidnapped. She was kidnapped by him, right? Yes. Oh, my God. What part of the world was and this? That, in Long Island. Oh, my I God. Was just out. And then a couple of times, you know, you got to, you ha- well, go back to the well thing. Um, yeah. Uh so, okay, so what do you do? Do you ever watch that? What, what's that movie? Schindler's List. No, Two the girls, trivia thing. Um, Quiz show. No. 
Uh, Boogie Nights. When the girl. Oh, gosh, I hate this. Goodfellas. The girl did what? She was helped, uh, held captive? One flew over the country. Anthony mess. Hopkins. Ah. Oh, t- uh, uh, Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lamb. There you go. Yeah. Okay. She's stuck in well. Same. Yes, she is. Was Mine was not as deep, but yada, yada, yada. I don't like rehashing these kind of things. Sure. So anyways, yeah. But that guy that guy had raped you and held you captive and then threw you down a well. Isn't that essentially the, the story? Yeah, basically, oh my a lot more so. A lot yeah. more. And then, so, then you had a head injury with that, right? Were you hit over the head or did you? No, the no. head injury was prior to the well thing. The head injury was the fight in the bar when you were pregnant. Right. And, actually. And that was she was declared dead and her oh child wasn't supposed God. to make it. And she needed a, had to put a plate in her head and seizures and all kinds of lovely things. How did you survive that? I don't know. I, um, every morning I wake up and I watch church. And I listen to what... Um, they preach, and then I put on Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> hey, Bruce can pull you out of some dark times. Yep. So what? What? How? What are you up to now? Like, what happens if the Stern Show doesn't come over to do an in, 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 uh, an in depth and embedded? What is like a typical day for Tan Mom right now? What am I doing right now? Yeah. Um, I did write a book, oh. but my family said that, that they would disown me. At the moment, my parents are passing away, and so is my exes. And so moving all their stuff out of the house and doing shows, people want me on radio programs and doing photo shoots, but I'm trying to mentally get myself back together and teaching my older kids that they're not going to disrespect me anymore because uh, I can't take it. So that really, my goal is the freshness with my older kids. I, I will not stand for it. Are you still living with your husband? He comes and goes, and no, we're divorced. But, but I thought you were hey, still... You're officially divorced? Not like totally on paperwork. Oh, but it's it's over. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I thought you guys were still living together. He comes and goes, as I said. Not he, I don't sleep with him. Uh, but does he have a home outside of the home you live in? Yes. Oh, okay. Are you dating anybody? No. I was dating this guy from the Cowboys, but... Uh, from the course. Dallas Cowboys? Yeah. Oh my Why? goodness! What's the big deal? Wait a minute. Well, because uh, I mean that's one of the premier, uh, you know, American athletic associations. It's, it's I thought it was know, a big o- deal. I thought it was an oil guy from Texas. What we don't that? like run around and talk about it. I used oh. to go out with a jet, but when I Mark he got David Cadigan was okay. one of them a while ago, and now Dennis Rodman is in a rat. Um, Michael Ju- I mean, I know. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, I know. You dated Dennis Rodman? I, mean, I know all these people. Did you it's have sex like- with Dennis Rodman? I couldn't hear that. What? Did, did you ever sleep with Dennis Rodman? No, I was at a party at his house with a guy I was dating and in Newport. And he had this yellow Porsche and then we went to a party on his house and his entourage. And then we all went out. But then when we were at the house, then he was doing, like, drugs upstairs. And uh-huh. I'm like, no. That's just not for you. And he yeah. just thought I was really good looking. But I, these are people I know and friends. Like, right. if I walk somewhere, you know, it's not like. We call each other every day. Have you, you know ever I mean? have you ever had sex with a celebrity? No. No. Oh. What What is your no. status like now with with Sal Governale? 
I always liked him, but I'm not gonna um do anything. He's married. Right. And if he's sleeping on the couch, that's not my problem. Is oh. he sleeping on the couch? I, well, who I th- knows? I thought he, knows. he and his wife were doing fine. He's a, he's a great human being, and maybe the greatest entertainer that's ever lived. Well, Tam Bob's the greatest entertainer. He's really, really funny. Um, he, we connect. I'm not going to interfere with his wife. Right. That's not my place. You seem like I, such well, a, you seem like such a sexual person, though. I find it hard to believe that you're not you're not getting some now. Like it, why? Just because I know you're understand I understand you're going through some some hardship with your marriage. You seem so sexual. I would imagine you're getting sex from somewhere. No, whatsoever. None. It's called Mister Finger. Oh. You strike me as a sex toy lady. You don't have a vibrator or something like that. I don't particularly care to discuss that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean I'm sorry. I didn't mean to talk about something you didn't want to talk about. We, we have Yeah, I do, but it doesn't work. So there you go. <laughs> it doesn't work cuz you like the batteries are dead or you just you broke it with with powerful vag use. Okay, what is the purpose of that question? That's all that's the only way Mike knows how to talk. That's how Mike talks. No, I well no, yeah, when I hear when I hear that a vibrator doesn't work, I'm curious if it got b- broken during use, or if it's just happens to be, you know. So I, I got some out of juice. Patricia, what were you doing out in Newport Beach, California, visiting with Rodman? No. Did you say you were in Newport? Yes, yeah, she could mean Rhode Island. I guess. Well, yeah, but Rodman. that was way back. A long, long time ago with I my see. first husband, and I wanted a divorce, and he wouldn't divorce me. So then I met somebody when I was out doing the show. What show? And I just. What show? Shows. Oh. Oh, just a collection. Okay. And, and I, I didn't know you had a first husband. Tell me, tell me about that. How old were you when you got married to him? Oh, actually, I was golfing. In Dallas. Mm-hmm. And then, what do you call that place? The mansion on Turtle Creek. So, when I was golfing there, I got bored. Then met somebody. Then got on a plane. And then went out to California. Uh-huh. No, flew back to Chicago. Then went to California. When- and that's how I met Gil. Because what? this That's your first really, time. really rich guy wanted to go out with me. And I'm like, nah. You know, he really bored me. Is this, so is this your first? Like, if you go, no, we go into this great restaurant and the owner sends over like an awesome bottle of wine. And the guy I was with, which I didn't care about, obviously. So he's like, oh, my God. You know, like he got intimidated, but the owner of the restaurant sent it over and it was like the bomb. And he goes, I go, let's go out. And he goes, if we go into this club, I'm going to lose you. I go, no, 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 I'm not going to lose you. Well, obviously. So when I went into the club, (laughs) I met these two girls. I go, pretend we know each other. Uh-huh. So, I lost the guy in the Mercedes. I'm just like, go. And, and so, and then, when you say he's boring, what is that? Two minutes later, that's how I met Gil. And that's how the whole LA, LA Beverly Hills yada yada story started. Gil's not your first husband. Gil's your first husband? No, that was the guy I was with. I, I see. Left gotcha. my first husband. Gotcha. Uh, and and when you said the guy was boring, what made him boring? Good question, Drew. Which one? The guy that was ha- at the really rest- any guy. If he is boring yeah. to Patricia, what does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah. Um, I don't like. It. What's boring? Yeah, when you say the guy's just boring, what does that mean? When anyone tells me what to do. Oh, so you don't like being told what to do, right? Never. Never. 
Even in the bedroom? I raised myself, so that is a definite no-no. You, she came from a rich family, I think, originally. Yeah, Patricia did, yeah. What, so what do you mean you raised yourself? I just did what I, I raised myself. I don't... That's... What are we actually talking about? A book here? No, your life. Your, your life. My, Mike's never met you before. He's very interested in I'm fascinated by you. Yeah. And, and so I was saying, you said you raised yourself. And so I said, well, you, I knew you came from a family that was pretty well off. Were they just not around for you? Not a trick question. You still there? It was just a very rich situation. But not a good one. No. It was a lot of wonderful things, but lacking in a lot of different areas. Got it. And you said your parents are passing away now? Are they, are they, is that true? Is that No, they're like on Chicken Soup Hill. Um, yeah. They're on Chicken, chicken soup. soup Hill. That's yeah. old, right? You mean they're, they're subsisting yep. on, on mush? Yeah. Well, that's what it is. What are you going to do? Do you have other siblings? Brothers and sisters? Yep. How many? Six. Six brothers and sisters? Yeah. Uh, do you have a relationship with them Do you get still? along with them? Yeah. No. How come? Because I prefer not to. The only person I kind of like a little bit is my brother John always. Okay. Um, are you tanning still? A little bit. Yeah. What is what do you do when you tan? Like, do you go to the you go to the booths, right? The tanning salon. Yes, this whole stupid thing happened because of it. Yes. And when you say this whole stupid I've thing, I've been. I ahead. listen. I spent my life at the beach. I'm from the Hamptons. I'm from the Key West. I'm from. Cuba, all over the world. I, what is the big deal? And I did not stick my daughter in some stupid booth. And it, you know, it really ticks me off because every time I hear a story about these mothers, aka, that stick their infants in a car with an inch, even a, a, a puppy dog. Um, which, quite frankly, animals are better than humans today. So, anyways, they will stick them in the car, go shopping. Uh-huh. Nothing happened to her. Not a word. But yeah. I went global. Now, uh, that is a great question. I think, well, I think it's because of, Dr. Your, Drew. of now, your personality. I want Dr. Drew to answer that. What? Why me? Why Why did your story this, it resonate so much? Because of you. Why? I, why? Well, I, I think it was uh, slow news. I, I think there was not a lot of going on back then. Okay. Um. And the degree, even you look back at how dark you were back then, and to, even to you, it's kind of striking. You were so dark visually; it was it was sort of stunning. And I and I and you didn't seem to be aware of it at the time. And I think that's what attracted people's attention. Why it became such a story, I, it's hard to say. Does that make sense? No. No, oh, doesn't make sense. How come a mother can go shopping for four hours? Nothing hits the press with an infant yeah. in a car with two inches, if yeah. that. Yeah. You know what? Listen, you're asking actually a really good I, – I, what you're asking is a really good question, and, and I, I've thought the same thing too. Like, remember when there was a runaway bride? Yeah. That was not a story. Yeah. Right. The woman was manic. She was psychotic. She ran away. She got lost. She was confused. Oh, it's a runaway bride. National press. It's a runaway bride. No, right. No, there there are certain narratives, and there are certain narratives, Patricia, that that news just 
loves. Yeah, it's it's also it's just a little bit more unheard of, I think, because there everyone has at least but, seen but a it, child it, in a car. It created a narrative that the news broadcasters love to hang on to. Do you think Drew? And there, there was a visual piece to it too that also attracted eyes. Do you so think that's Drew it. and Patricia? I'll ask you, and I, I understand you're a humble person, but I want you to be honest here. Do you think maybe when people saw you on the news, you were just so there? There was such a high level of sex appeal that that's what captivated people's attention. Is that you were so sexy and you were giving off such a unique vibe? I was in jail. How could I have looked sexy? You were in jail. For seven days. Ooh. There's something hot about that. I mean, speaking as a straight man, there's something kind of hot about you, maybe in like a like a pinstripe suit, like the cat, like the Hamburglar, J- and uh, maybe some side jail, escapes. not prison. No, they didn't have any pictures of that. I didn't. Uh, were you I not wearing panties? This- She's right. She's right, Mike. No, I, I'm like, get me. What the hell is going on, Mike? Mike. All That's of a Mike. Sudden, That's oh, Mike. I Patricia, d- don't worry, it's Mike. No, no, she's saying what was the hell was going on when she was the object of such attention. Oh, uh, okay. Uh-huh. Well, guys, can't, I mean, I, I think guys and lesbians can't get enough of you. That's what it is. I, I, I mean, you'd be as good at explaining it as I can. Do you, <sighs> do you, like, do you like that kind of attention, Tan Mom? Is that, is that something that is appealing to you? I think, and I'll speak for her. Susan and me, I think we like to look pretty, but we do not want that kind of icky. Sure. Crazy attention. But, but I, I mean, I have seen, you know, some, some pictures of you that you put, I, I believe in the post, that, you know, it was a bikini shoot, a little bit of a topless action, T-O-P-L-E-S-S, you know, so... There, from, there from is recently. Well, this is from a, a couple years ago, right, Patricia? Listen, every once in a blue moon, I think we all have like urges in ourselves mm. that might. I'll speak for myself. Okay. Go a little over the limit. But then you go back home to what you love. And it's just like a little bit of moment of freedom to say, in my words, F you. Who who are you saying F you to? Just the world? Yeah. So there you go. Is this what you want? Boom. And then goodbye. I see. Oh, okay. So you, so you give us one little taste of the Patricia sexiness, and then it's like, hey, I'm out. Yeah, because you can't get me because right. I don't want you. Do you not want anyone right now? I, I get that vibe that you, even if the guy was a nice guy, good looking, that you're just you're turned off to the idea of romance right now. I would love... Um. Be with somebody that I could cook with, sit in front of a fireplace, and then understand me and laugh and love my kids. Weren't you with a guy from a rich guy from Texas recently? Was that the cowboy guy? A couple, but a couple, couple guys from Texas. I thought one was there was oil guy. There was nothing sexual whatsoever because it just didn't click so i was just like gotcha did you ever did you go visit him in texas no 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 i mean i've been back and forth did he come visit you here yes oh okay and those were uh... did truly ever meet that guy why would truly have anything to do with this conversation? I, I thought he wanted well, to meet that guy. I, I, and I, you know, he has done some uh, pretty extensive coverage of you and, and been involved in your life, at least how, in, as how it relates to the Stern show. Yeah, well, Sal always has to walk away because I think inadvertently his wife, I don't want to get in the middle of sure. their mess. 
Sure. What about and nothing what about, ever happened? What about and Sal? And, and we're all. You know what? Think is that we all do crazy things, uh-huh. but reality isn't actually reality. What it's is a it? Bold claim. It's the Stern Show is the funnest thing I've done, and they really have been good friends to me. I don't like recently what happened to Dr. Drew. And that declined me on a lot of other aspects. Are you talking about the, and the, then, mag, the Mad Magazine no, no, situation? No. You asked me a question, let me answer it. Okay, well, it's hard to follow. So, um, oh, okay, we'll call in. Well, I have a life. And I'm not going to sit on hold for anyone. So uh-huh. there goes that notion as well. Not even the king of all media. <laughs> Okay, so what else do you want to know? I, I want to know more like Patricia's philosophy on living. This is a You Live podcast. Right. We no, hear- that's a very good point, Drew. If we, I mean, advice for our listeners would be great. Yes. You've, you're a woman who's lived such a, a, a colorful life. Um, and I want to know, what, do you, what are your recommendations to being healthy emotionally? I wake up every morning. Uh-huh. No. I go to bed every night and I pray for my kids. Okay. And my true friends, true friends. And when we speak to each other, you know, we could sit here and go on and on about so many different things. But the most important aspect I feel is the closeness and I do believe, I don't care what religion you are, church, pray, whatever religion you are. And listening to how to make your inner body better and you learn to breathe and think it out. And my biggest, only biggest, biggest concern it's always my kids. But I have learned that my older kids, I have to let go, unfortunately, for the moment, because they're sidetracked. How, how old are they? You got to go. Meaning my oldest daughter. You just got to go. What age are we talking about? For the moment. And, okay. So, I... Can't let all the negativity come around my little ones. And I have to focus a lot more on me. But when you're surrounded by negative things, and I tell my kids all the time, and when they come and hug me, and I I feel tense sometimes. I'm just like... (sighs) Because, I don't know, I'm trying really, really bad to make it better for them. And I call them little ones. They're all little ones. This is so conflicting. Meaning, they need to understand. And I always tell my kids, from the moment they were born, stand tall. You stand tall in your beliefs. And me, even though I might mess up, we can get through this. That's beautiful words. And and these are, how old are your older kids? 24, 22, 21, 12, and 8. Five kids. I'm exhausted and I'm out of wrinkle cream. You're out of wrinkle cream. You don't need it. I thought I, – I don't know how you could have a 24-year-old child. I thought you were like 30. Everyone says that. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Gosh. Yeah. I, I can understand why everyone would say that. All right. Well, shall we wrap up? Yeah. Patricia? I just – I want to say from the bottom of my heart, Patricia, it was such an honor to talk to you. I've been such a fan for a long time, and I really appreciate you taking time out of your day. 
to uh, to talk to us. Please. Our Facebook fans are a little discouraged. They they think that we're making fun of her. But I wanted to ask Patricia: Do you feel like we're making fun of you? No. Okay. We want to make that straight. Yeah, it's straight. that we had no intention of doing that. We're not, you know, we're not trying to. Who, not gonna, who said you were making well, some I'm angry, made. jealous people, Patricia? Well, when I, I, I can see the feed during the, you know, the Facebook Live, and you know, people are concerned with the way, you know, it, it, we're, we're, we've followed you for a long time, and I think that as a woman, I, I kind of understand that you're, you're not the average whack packer, and you have a lot of. A lot more going on than most of the average whack. I didn't even know what a freaking whack packer was. <laughs> you know? But but I think you get sort of the short end of the stick sometimes, and that's it's not our intention. I I just wanted you to you know have a platform for yourself. And she's she has. Well, that's why I wanted her to tell the story of where the, the horrible well, tra- she, she trauma. Can, she it's can, hard to believe. It's so crazy. Yeah, okay, I mean, but we can send people to the Howard Vortex at drdrew.com right. and they can hear the whole interview because right. she already went through that. She, she did. I know. She really doesn't want to relive it. No, over I know. And over again. I, that's why. That's, Understandably, that's, yeah. it's, it's so dark. No, we the the vortex. We got into great detail about her story. And the well, today so. she sounds. She doesn't sound drunk. No. And people are wondering if you're drinking, but I know no. your your voice is normally like this because she's had head injuries yes, before. Yes, yes. I had to explain. That, um, oh, like uh, Doctor Drew said a long time ago. Oh no, no. When what's her face, uh, Dana Romas, and uh, he said, "Oh, forget the Tylenol and all that." No, I had a glass and two of wine, but who cares? Yeah, but you're not like you're not wasted. Your, your no, voice, no, no. your voice is no. Now, no. okay, Susan. We all know that Patricia's. She's well accustomed to dealing with the haters. Yeah. It's just going to happen. We're not making fun of her. No, absolutely not. No, no, no. no. That I wasn't our Mike, Mike is a huge fan. I'm a, I, I, there's very few people that I am more interested and in. And Mike jokes around with everybody, to be fair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, when we all go to Jersey, we'll go hang out with her. I mean, how much do I talk about? Uh, I'm, first off, I'm in to what you just said. And, <laughs> and, uh, uh, Drew, how much do I talk about your uh, genitals and 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 the activity yeah, you around may, you it? Know, Patricia, she makes fun of me all the time. That's yeah, he, it's, it's he's, my main point of interest. He's a, he's addicted to sex, Patricia. It has nothing to do with you, but it's now. I really, really want to just since we're just sitting here uh-huh. um, for a second. Um, who's talking fresh about me? No, people are, uh, the, you know, when you're social on media, social nonsense. media and people are like, there's always somebody that goes, Oh, why are you doing this? This woman and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you know what? I, I told him, I said, we're not making fun of oh her. I God. said, I said, you're a very strong woman and you've, you've outlived, <sighs> you've, you've dealt with adversity in your life and you're still alive and you, you know, you're trying your hardest. I don't, I'm not making fun of you. So, we appreciate the fact that you... I never it. said you did. No. I want to know who said something about me. Just some random person. It's I, just random Twitter uh, stuff. Nobody nobody so. I know. Like, not my best friend or anything. But I just I, I just want people to know that that... You know what you need to do? Take a big bubble bath and soak your fucking head in it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a sound bite for this show. <laughs> Get the chick that said something about me and let them all soak in a tub. <laughs> soak their head in a bubble <laughs> bath. Yeah, she told you. All right, Patricia. <laughs> Thank you, Patricia. Thanks so much. And uh, you and Susan know I'll talk soon, okay? Yeah, we'll. Okay, I love you all. Okay. Bye bye. That was Patricia Tan Mom. I don't know her last name, but man, is she a real delight to talk to. I loved it. Germany Cricket. Tan Mom. Tan Mom. about four months and uh, we're checking back in with patricia and uh you sound great patricia how's everything going everything's going everything's going really great um well a little bit of ups and downs on the movement in my home but um what's what's that all about out the flower, what, what, huh? what's going on in your home oh uh, it was just a big mess with my ex and everything but um, I don't want to get into a hole. I'd like to be happy, not talk about like the bad things. Okay. But are you with your kids? Are, kids? You, are your kids with you? Oh, oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Moving to uh, West Palm Beach. Wow. And 
yeah, really excited. And I just was going through all these crazy things and then got back in touch with a lot of positive people and, uh, you know, great energy and trying to keep, I just learned a lot about myself. I turned 50. Ah! No, I turned 60 soon. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, uh. I hope neither of us look it. So, <laughs> uh, I got some, uh, what I, I got lip, my lips done. I'm getting a couple plastic surgeries done. Uh, just fun things. Now you, and then, you, you put um, out a video too. Was that, was that the Stern crew that put that video out? Uh, Stern put it out as always. They're, uh, you know, best friends. And, um, yeah, uh, feel to be, uh, oh gosh, I'm sorry. I'm just like rushing a little bit. Uh, free to be me, which is based upon, you know, um, letting go when I turned 50 just to be me where everybody with this whole tan mom, tan mom, but it does repeat itself in the song. But, um, it really was about just saying goodbye, you know, and turning a new leaf. Wow. Love it. And, yeah. And, and is that goodbye to your life uh, up in New York or New Jersey? Or is that goodbye to your, yes. uh, your ex-husband or goodbye? Hello. What, what, goodbye to what? Goodbye to Tamar? Goodbye. Goodbye to all that. Just goodbye. Yeah, just really um, don't like negative people around me anymore. And I never did. But I really need emotion to make my life different and not try to let people bring me down all the time anymore. Like, I just have to just keep being me, you know, and funny. But I'm really just a lot more to me that people don't get, which brings out. Oh, feels to be free to be me, Patricia Marie. I need it. just because I like to tan doesn't mean you know I'm just a tan mom. Right, so. I, I get it. Now, I I had thought your husband helped you, ex husband had helped you out a lot. Do you, do you miss him in your life? Um, not whatsoever. Really, and and your ki- your kids? We, do they miss him? No, we see them. We see each other. Okay. So there's still contact. Yeah, and stuff. It, it was. Yeah, it was over a long time ago. It, it, it's a lot. It, you know what? Um, even if you and Susan have your, we all do in life. But it's a matter of treating somebody in a mar- any any relationship uh, with respect, because then you start slumming down and becoming not yourself. You got to be uplifted and be yourself. Patricia stuff, Marie spitting, you know? spitting inspiration. I know you so, live. And, and you right. live, Patricia. So, so are you still friends with Shuli? Oh my God, I love Mick Shuli. What are you crazy? Well, I thought you were getting. He's fed coming up. out. Last time you were a little bit getting frustrated with him, you know. A, a little bit, a little bit, but no. Um, every everyone, no. Mick Shuli is actually going to be coming out. Um, where are we going? Uh, to Florida to do, he's going to be showing up in the video too. So, you know, he turned out, you know, we made up, you know, we all, all have fractions in life. So, um, how about Sal? To get over them. How about Sal? You get more contact with him? Um, he always will be my best friend. I love Sal. We have our, um, friendship, which is awesome. It's just that, um, I don't want to get in the middle of somebody's marriage or, or anything. Nothing ever happened either. I'm just saying, like, I, I always will care for him. But, you know, who has time for all that anyway? Then you're down in Florida now anyway. And, and I still am, um, what, gobsmacked, as my British friend would say, by your text. I still don't understand all the emojis that you, you get your head around. The, da- the dancing lady and the high heels and the and the poops and the volcanoes and the, Stephen Adler does that too. And, the, and the church steeple. I don't get. I don't, my brain doesn't work like that. But are you still are you still doing those very creative texts? I think you're separated at birth from Stephen Adler. You know, everybody like trips out of emojis. Howard wants to get his own emojis now. But um, when I get aggravated, that's the stamp. Or I'm happy. You know. I'm very all over the place. Well, Dr. Drew, you know that. Yes, Doc. I do. I do. And um, I think the emojis are the deepest expression of that. Yeah. And then I, when I'm happy, I, I put the smiley faces. It all depends what mood I'm in. 
And then if it's raining and you're picking me off, then there goes the mean or I feel like I'm going to throw up because people are aggravating me. There's the bar sign. You know, I have the bar working. And then the anger faces. Um, the high yield one is when you piss me off or stop. I made my statement. Now go away. You're stopping. You're stopping your heel. Put, putting down her foot. Yeah. Putting her foot down. Yeah. Literally. A flip flop doesn't work. Let, let me no, let me let me ask you something. Right. I want to ask you a really serious question, and, and that okay. is, you know, you you said you're all over the place. And the emojis are sort of a reflection of that. Is is some of that all over the place stuff left over from the head injury? Do you think? Um, I definitely will always base a little bit on it, but um, I have come so far. I just, you know, I I have to say honestly. When I'm around bad people and that are mean and not like positive, yeah, I go into not a great zone, and I I swarm myself with health and positive so, thoughts. So let me ask because right now you sound of, you sound amazingly good right now, and I'm wondering when you're around these bad people, do they make you do you end up drinking or what do you end up doing that get puts you in a bad way? I just I. No, the whole drinking thing, it just, um, there will always be a little part of that in my life, some ridiculous way. Um, it doesn't have to be, but it doesn't make it a hard thing. It's like, it's a grape. So uh, what I used to be and what I am today, but no, I don't want to base it on that. When I'm around all those people, no, I do not feel good with myself. I don't. No, because does, I have this, you, like does, higher. Does that make you depressed? I have a higher energy the... in me today at fifty that makes me not do bad things anymore. Well, I, I hear it. I hear it in your voice, and I hear it in your thinking. But I, I, I don't quite know what those bad things were. That's what I was just asking about. When you get around those bad people, what are the bad things you do? Is it just you get depressed? You get anxious? Do you drink? What What happens? Um, I get very sad. It brings back not doesn't bring back bad memories per se it just um it makes me angry like why can't people just be nice to each other right and then when you see what goes on in the world i mean you can go on with this forever as you well know yeah um it's all that negativity like why not sit around with your family and stuff like that instead of like you just see people going and shooting people i i just the whole you know that that's turning a curb as you would say or something like that off the question the question is this there's a lot of bad things in the world so i've learned how just to grip myself into the most positive way i possibly can and drink tons and tons of water oh that's good water's good you won't get dehydrated that way we'll get you some hydro oh yeah we have this sponsor that we really like that's really good for hydration that i'll send you i i love Every kind of water there is out well, there. Well, this is more I than mean, water. Like, this is this is a really yeah. hydrates. So this is when you so you get in that Florida sun, you'll be good. <laughs> yeah, For your tanning booth. Yeah, yeah, you don't need the tanning booth anymore. Hello, you live, you live in Florida. You don't need the tanning booth it's anymore. Real vitamin D down there. That's what's happening. Well, listen. I, no, that's another thing. I don't even tan like as much as I used to either. So it's all. Good. I'm like totally great about myself now. You sound no, better. I'm more concentrated. On all like moisturizers and oh my god, everything's like <laughs> feeling really smooth and great. And oh, I just awesome. um, need to exercise a little bit more too. We'll do that. We'll do that. It gets important as we yeah. get older. Getting out Trust of New me. York is sometimes a positive thing for people. Well, wait, where was your? You were in New Jersey, weren't Jersey, you? Yeah. 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 I'm well, from Long Island, but I lived in New Jersey. Don't tell anyone. Well, listen, you sound great, and it's good to do this little check-in with you, you. And I appreciate you, you know, spending a little time with us. And we look forward to whatever the future holds for you. We'll, I'll, I'll, you know, I, I personally am a huge fan of when you show up on the Stern Show, and I know it's a little hard because Shuley starts doing imitations, and Howard's talking to Robin. Oh, and, and, you know. oh I know. It's all good because it's, it's just comedy. That's the that, thing that's people a, don't that, get sometimes. That's right. It's comedy. And sometimes and, it aggravates me. When I call in, I'm like, 
How dare you? But that's know, part but, of the, um, but that's part of the comedy. You're having a real reaction, right? And so Right. Yeah, and so it's it's shit stirring also. It's shit stirring yeah. and it's comedy and that's what people love is that genuineness of a whole thing. So all right, Patricia. Yeah. Well, listen. You take care of yourself. So, if you're in Los Angeles, you got to visit us. All right. Yeah, and also, can we play? Okay, I definitely will. Can we play some? Love of you guys. Your, can we play some of your uh, audio from your from your video? video? Oh God. <laughs> Is that okay? Is that okay if we do that? Of course. Okay. Okay. All we're right. gonna we're gonna put that on. We'll Who talk. has it? <laughs> it's it's on YouTube. I just saw it this morning. It's, it's funny. <laughs> My favorite part is you in the sun. That's so funny. It's really funny. So we which one? I don't know. The new one or the old one? Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Old... You're gonna have to send maybe. Us I, the... Maybe I watched the old one. I, I need all your versions, this Patricia. Is the old one. Okay, what's the That's... new one? Okay, go ahead. We need all the new okay. ones. We'll get. We'll get all your. Is stuff. there a new one being released? Is that the deal? Yes. Uh, you don't even know it. I'll find it. I'll find it. I promise. I must have seen the old one. <laughs> well, we don't know which one. I, yeah, they're all they're all good to me. Oh, oh it's in three. It's in three D. Oh my goodness! The hologram of uh, Patricia. No, it's the new one. It's feel free to be me. Okay. All right, we'll find it. We'll find it. We'll tag it on. Okay, here. feel free to be All me. Right, but- Howard playing it. They, yeah, Howard played it. <laughs> We're trying to plug <laughs> you, Patricia. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, ladies, I'm going to sign out. You guys have fun. And uh, we are going to take a quick break and come back with everyone's best friend, Jason Ellis. Well, it's about time for athletes, trainers to report for the start of the fall season, but we are still dealing with that extreme heat. So even if you're training indoors, dehydration is a major issue for amateurs and pros. Water, sports drinks, they do not do a great job. I've known this for a long time. That's why I wanted to develop a product. Instead, Hydrolyte came along, so I strongly suggest you stay ahead of your hydration with Hydrolyte. The best way to stay hydrated is with a proper balance of sodium, glucose, and water, and Hydrolyte does this better than anything else I've tried. Everyone here swears by it, my wife, my kids, my patients. I use it if patients need rehydration. It's a way to replete hydration orally this gets you ahead of the game and so you can sometimes avoid hospitalization things in my experience hydrolyte comes in great flavors like orange berry and lemonade available as a pre-mixed drink a powder or my personal preference is these effervescence tablets you simply drop in a glass of water or a bottle of water literally uh, we don't leave home without these compared to sports drinks hydrolyte delivers up to four times the electrolytes with 75 percent less sugars Hydrolyte solutions are appropriate for all ages and each bottle or package includes easy to follow instructions this is the best hydration product out there, period, and you can find Hydrolyte at Rite Aid or at Hydrolyte.com slash Dr. Drew, D-R-D-R-E-W. And for a limited time, our listeners can save 30% on Hydrolyte. I just sent my daughter over to buy this stuff. She's like, I need Hydrolyte. I'm like, go to the website and use the code Dr. Drew 18, D-R-D-R-E-W 18 at checkout. That is H-Y-D-R-A-L-Y-T-E dot com, Hydrolyte.com slash D-R-D-R-E-W 18. Use that code, get 30% off. You won't need any other hydration products. It's the best. Welcome back. Dr. Drew putting in the eye drops. That's right. My stupid dry eye. On the phone, everyone's everyone's favorite person, Jason Ellis of the Jason Ellis Show. Tamam. Sirius, oh. Sirius XM 103. We just got off the phone with Tamam. It was amazing. It's well, I've never amazing. seen Mike so happy in my life. No, I, I, saw, I saw some of it. I was watching you guys on Facebook. So, so what happened to you? Oh, uh, well, I haven't, I've had like a really bad run when it comes to trying to get back in shape Uh-oh. and long story short, I finally got to start training and everything. So I arrived last week. So I just, you know, been trying to be as smart as I can, uh, taking it easy on my way back in and I have jujitsu every Thursday and for some weird reason, he just says, do you want to just roll? And I was like, yeah, man, let's just do that. And. It wasn't that hard, it wasn't that physical, but when you haven't done it for at that level for three months, I don't, I really, uh, it's like, I can't tell if it's that, because I didn't feel it yesterday as much, but I have a problem from skateboarding where I've knocked my hips out so many times, and I think it's like a lot of tendonitis and maybe um, some stuff like that that's all in my hips, so it just locks up, and then Oof. I stretch it and stretch it, and because I could go get a massage, but I just got all these little massage balls and all this crap, and I just ice it and stretch it, and somehow it comes good. It's just a little embarrassing and terrifying that it comes so quick now. Uh, 
Why why is it that? Because I uh, you know, I know that you get so much out of it. Not only physically, I mean you get you you got an incredible shape for your fight, but you get so much out of it emotionally and psychologically it, when you're yeah. training hard. Uh. Why is it that you intermittently take these big breaks? Is it just emotional stuff going on psycholo- outside of you know, in your personal life and it just tears you away? Um I mean, I just think I mean, for for the MMA, for the fight. I mean, I'm not a fighter, man. I, I just I got into it, and I and I want to be tested. I mean, I'm actually terrified of fighting, and that's half the reason I had a fight. I mean, to it's way more terrifying to to plan it out. I I, I don't know why I, I keep. Through, I mean, like at this point, I'm not sure why I train so hard. I, I I for the first time in my life, I can kind of see that. Some of this stuff is a little bit masochistic, and and uh, maybe I'm doing it to like prove a point to people that aren't even here anymore. So huh. I'm trying to take it easy, but I don't know when it when it comes to that. I've always been a guy where I go hard and my body shuts down, and then I take a break. But for the fighting thing, I've just after that fight, I felt like that was the biggest test. I, all I really wanted out of MMA was to to prove that if I get hurt, I can. I can keep going. So yeah, I only just kicked back. And then obviously I didn't take testosterone. You know that. I think I told you, but I didn't take testosterone because I I thought it was illegal to do that. Right. I didn't know that that was only in the UFC. So I got staph infection and then I quite frankly just lost a little desire because I was like, I don't, I mean, it's already, I'm, I'm well aware how stupid it is to try and be a pro cage fighter at 46. I with my background, I know that. So, what, what do you mean with your background? Oh, my injuries, your injuries and yeah. you know, I mean, I, I yeah. feel like you know, I mean, it's not. I don't have a normal forty-six-year-old man's body. I have a a broken, you know, I mean, just like I, I, when I was when I was thirty, I could, you know, I mean, my knees wobbled around like I was eighty. It's not. It's not a. You know, I mean, I'm a mangled man. Right. How how come like. Football player. I mean, obviously, football players. It does, it's not hard to find reasons why they'd have brain damage. But how come it seems like athletes are starting to discover serious brain injury from a lot less taxing stuff than what a lot of professionals? Did you see that new stuff? Did you see that new thing that came out that proved that uh, like the big concussions is not the problem? With right. The, it's a on continuous the ongoing or whatever. Yeah, it's a continuous ongoing like little little trauma to the head. Um, but like I would right. imagine, guys like like you and Danny Way and Vert Skateboarders, especially from from the past, you guys have had massive amounts of concussions. How is it that almost all of you are perfectly fine? Oh, really? All of us are. I mean, I know this is like a show where people listen, but <laughs> I, I, I don't really want to say it. But I, I don't think everybody's that fine. <laughs> well, okay, but. You like to make fun and everything, but like talking to you, you, it's clear your brain functions at a very good level. Like you're, you're I'm, not no... talking about, I'm not talking about me. <laughs> yeah, okay, maybe there's other guys in the game that I'm just not aware of, but there are. It's you know, I mean you, you lose a piece, and, and yeah. quite frankly, it's I'm still young. Like you don't you don't know, you know. Like I, I'm, you can get away with it by being a stoner your whole life, and oh, I don't know, I don't remember or stuff like something like that, but. Yeah, you know, I feel like for me, the older I get, the the wiser I get. I like eat and put things in my body that are probably better for memory and stuff like that. So maybe it evens out, or maybe or maybe I've just never really paid attention to it. Like I don't have an education. There's no real. You mean what do I remember? I don't remember the lyrics to songs. I don't remember books. I didn't read any, so I can't. Things seem to be going well. I know you just said that I'm having a conversation. You seems to be working, but I have seen other guys that are not as lucky. Yeah. All right. Makes sense. Like they don't remember <laughs> stuff. They don't seem all there. Hey, hey, how is I? You know, I, don't, I haven't really talked to you since you got married. How's married life? I talked to you once. I was on a podcast, but married life is awesome. Where. Uh, 
Did we you talk know, about we I'm, not, I'm not remembering. Like else, what, what, what did I forget? Well, yeah. what, what, what is Drew brain, blame what his brain did, trauma on? Yeah, what did podcast did we do? You did the Dr. Drew podcast. I listened to it. You guys were fantastic. That's since marriage? Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was yeah. like, like right. two weeks ago. Yes, right. it was last month. Right. I must have dropped and off, I, huh? Somehow, <laughs> some, well, yeah. It was it was the holiday. We, yeah, I wasn't telling him about it. But you, thank you for doing it. I appreciate you doing two in a row with us. It's really nice. I would do a lot. I would do. I really. I can't believe you, should, you don't understand. All day, all morning, I'm just annoying my wife by like <laughs> trying to touch my toes. And I mean, the jacuzzi here, that ice pack. Give me the ice pack. Give me this. Give me that. I'm like oh. doing the uh, I'm a cripple. Help me thing. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, we just finished with Tan Mom, so by, yeah. you're by far yeah. ahead of the game. And I don't want to—I don't want to keep you yeah, on the I phone too that. much longer because I, I know that you're uh, <laughs> that you are in that situation. But I—I I found like everyone always asked me for a long time, especially in like the recovery circles. They're like, "How'd you handle getting divorced? How'd you handle getting divorced?" And then I—I I sat back and I thought about it not too long ago, maybe a couple weeks ago, uh, many many years now after being divorced. It was way harder to get married than it was to go through a divorce for me. Emotionally, everything that what? I had – For me, the idea of having to invest positive energy into a relationship was so much harder to wrap my head around than trying to just rid, rid myself of the negative ones. And I don't know – did you – Jason did you, had a rough go in the divorce. I understand. I, I did not. I didn't, yeah. My divorce was relatively amicable. But I, I, I don't know if – did you feel any of the same way or is that totally nonsense to you? It's total nonsense. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, getting married was fun. Yeah. Right? It, it, it was. Fun for you when it you was. Got no, it was. It, um, obviously, I'm referring to my, my current my marriage to my wife, Bianca. It was fun, but it okay. was also, did, it also did pressured me. you bad times? We, did you yell at your ex or anything when you guys got divorced? Or you Not really. Nothing? No, she left me, and it was like kind of out of the blue, um, but it was... It was just a, I've fallen out of love with you, and I hope I, I don't mean for this to be hard. I want to make this as easy as possible, and that was that. And I also didn't have kids, so okay. it, it, it's a much okay. much different situation. So you're talking about you're talking about kind of getting over a broken heart, then, right? Which was to me a lot easier as to deal adult. with. I think from a from a like a the the kind <laughs> of self inflicting of negative stuff was the way easier for me to deal with than trying to develop really purely positive feelings of love. And and learning, to, I had to love myself a little bit to be able to make a successful marriage go, and that shit wasn't easy. Well, dude, I, Drew knows. I mean, your divorce sounds like a freak of nature. Nobody nobody gets that kind of divorce. And to me, like falling out of love with somebody, that's nothing. Like yeah. the divorce is like I got kids, man. It's a constant. Yeah. You know, the, the angriest person in the world is is constantly calling you. It's terrible. Yeah, that does not sound good. Are you guys doing okay with the co-parenting now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we're right now as it stands, we are doing exceptionally well. Um, you know, we've had we've had tons of up and downs, and and I also think that my divorce on the scale of divorce is is still not very bad. But I mean, I. I don't live where I want to live. I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I'm run by somebody who I don't really, I'm not going to, I don't hate her, but I mean, I don't want to hang out. I don't want to know her. And I I live in sort of forever, you know, where she wants to live, right. <laughs> to stay near the kids. You know what I mean? Like, if that, do, is that if I really analyze that, that would piss me off all day. But it's just, whatever, the kids are happy, I don't care. Your daughter is so funny. Yeah, she really is. And your your she son is becoming is more Jason character. Jr. day every single day. He's just becoming a shrunken Jason. You know, he doesn't really you know too into moto anymore. He's trying to be a, a video game guy and a soccer player, quick huh. skateboarding and moto. Wow. So, yeah. I, I actually don't have a problem with that. I think it's a good idea. My wife's ex-husband made money hand over fist playing soccer, so maybe yeah. he can, as long as he can go down that route. Yeah, yeah. I just think it's the community you're in, which is also a thing that I noticed. It's, that's I think that's why that just was on the tip of my tongue. I, I feel like, you know, I mean, he's into the things that 
his community community is into. So, yeah, right. And I can tell that it's sort of uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a control thing that. Um. Well, you know what? Because I really don't mind. I'm like, dude, if whatever makes you happy. If you don't want to, if you don't want to skateboard, I don't care. Like, if really, it's kind of a sketchy scene. But I, I wish that he had more opportunities that of the things that I was interested in. And, and if you live near Beverly Hills, they don't have that. Mm, right. Interesting. Well, my friend, it's good to talk to but you. He's a fun kid. He's having fun. All right. Yeah. It's good to talk to you, dude. I will see you tomorrow. Uh, I'm excited about being yeah. able to come in, and uh, I want you to get some rest. Make, get we'll, get you ba- we'll get you back in here when your back's all, or your hips are back, whatever the injury is, is all yeah. squared. All right? You look good, Drew. I saw you on Facebook. You look good. Thank you, buddy. Miss you. Just saying. Do I look like shit? I mean, what the hell? For how old you are, too. I feel like we could do it, man. For how old I am? couple thing again. But... For how old I am? <laughs> <laughs> Right there. You look great. I mean, we, I, we could I work see. it. I know your wife's listening, but I just feel like, no I offense agree. to her, you and I. <laughs> you guys would be, would be such an awesome it. gay power couple. We'd be the best power couple we'll ever. Freaking have him, huge, Jason. Dude. <sighs> we got to do it. We gotta I do mean, you, if you want, if you want, you can still do her on the side. But I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm the man in charge. If you mean, like, I you gotta come home, baby. I understand, buddy. I, understand. Uh, I love you live. it. We got to do it. in the back with a Bane mask on, just we, barking we, out orders to Drew and Susan. <laughs> we got to do it. We got to. He and I have Look, to do some Mark, sort of I hate people. to, I hate to break it to you, but this, this, this dream doesn't involve you. Okay, I know. So you don't I have, know. I know. No, there's no Bane mask on. It's me and Drew make out. <laughs> face-to-face. He's a I'm passionate awesome. man. I'm sure I'll there's plenty at, of him to go around. I'll be at home Jason. jerking off to the thought of it. <laughs> oh, my God. No, this, it, we will allow that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not about we. It's whatever you allow, sir. Uh, I love it. Well, well, we're together, sir. Right, right. Whatever you want is what I want. Fair enough, man. Feel better. Take care. At uh, Wolfmate on Instagram and I believe also on Twitter. Yeah, and uh, you can hear him every day. Five days a week, I should say, on Sirius XM 103, Sirius yeah. XM Faction Talk. He's That was a kind of a mellow family day that was, podcast. That was today. family day, Jason, yeah. Yeah, it's family cool. Day, it's, fun, it's fun to hear. It's him. always good to talk. I mean, though. it's sad to hear that he's in pain, but... Mike, I want to mention our buddy Jason Ellis. His Ellis Mania is uh, August 24th, 25th, and 26th, right? You'll That's be there. Right. Oh, I'll be there. I'm fighting. You're fighting? Yes. What are you doing? <sighs> Blindfold dog collar match. Oh Gosh. my God! That's the best, my favorite of all. I know it's You'll the most ex- brutal of all. It's easily the most brutal of all. It, it's so explain what it is. It's it's the I'm most be blindfolded. Well, it's the most beautiful, brutal, the most unbelievable, and the most hysterical, by far. By I, far, I would say the I, it's one. up there with pinata. Pinata's pinata is up there too. I got to give you. So go ahead, tell them what it is. <laughs> um, it is a fight where there's four contestants in the ring at one time. And you are blindfolded, and you are attached. There is a dog shock collar attached around your neck, but not not a like a little uh, like a little. No, it floors you. It floors you. Guys it's, literally it's, fall it, to the well, ground. You, their going, body goes stiff when it really goes off. You start flailing like a fish. And yeah. they usually put the dog collar in the hands of somebody, some hot chick on the sideline or something, right? Yeah, just somebody just buzz, buzz, buzzes you. And in and, and then you're fighting and you're fighting blindfolded and are you is one high hand tied behind you or something too? No, 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 just yeah. you're, just blindfolded, you're boxing gloves and uh, blindfolded. Yeah. Oh my god. So I'm going to run around randomly, getting shocked and just swinging at nothing, and then getting swung and hit too. Oh, I'm sure, but randomly, probably not very much because oh, we're yeah. all blindfolded. Have you studied that that whole? Yes, I, there are four people the, usually running around. I there. understand that, but when you're blindfolded, it's really hard to clock someone, especially uh, yeah, in yeah. you know. In, in anywhere where it would really hurt. Right, you know, you're just enough. flailing, you fair know? Enough. So we'll be, and I'm singing the national anthem. Yes. Again this year, so. So it's the second okay. fight. It's after the lightweight musical chairs, and then <laughs> shock collar flight fight is at 8 or 5 p.m., so everybody has to go. What day? Is that Friday or Saturday? It's I, all I, on Saturday. Oh, it's okay. all on Saturday. The, yeah, the whole fight, the fights are all on Saturday. Oh, okay, Saturday night. That's yeah, the big event. There's it, like there's like a, a trike race on Friday and then some kind of a concert at the Hard Rock. All of our Friday Canadian night. friends, and I know there are lots of you because they all show up at the Hard Rock Seriously. for the Osmania. I've never seen so many Canadians in my life in Las Vegas. It's he's true. Got, I've got, never seen more Canadians even in Canada. Right, he's got lots of Canadian fans. Very interesting. It's right before the female music chairs and the strip chicks. So you're in the pussy 
area. In the window. The first, yeah, the first four are usually the pussy fighters. I'm, well, I'm a giant. Mean? Meaning I'm a giant pussy. <laughs> well, you were in the ring with Jason. That yeah. Was, yeah. I've been in the ring with Jason twice. Yeah. One time, I had one fucking hand duct taped to another human being and my leg duct taped to another guy. And then I just got pounded in the fucking face because I couldn't defend myself. Yeah, you have just one hand. The other guy's trying to punch and defend himself and I'm like, no, give me my right hand so that I... And Jason just looks, literally looked across at me and goes, well, there's a free shot. And just drilled me. Oh my God. Drilled me in the face. Oh no. Um, well, Aren't you glad you're just singing the national the, Oh, I'm glad I'm not working at his corner either. Is he doing a crazy fight? Obviously. What's he doing this year? Uh, Jason Jason's fighting Kingsbury. Kyle Kingsbury. Oh, it's just the two of them. Now he's not going to f- fight 12 people this time. <laughs> you know no, he's only fighting one man. But, Drew, um, I don't know if you know this fella. We might need to – I might. Uh, he's huge. Yeah. He's a former UFC fighter. Why is, he, why is Jason doing this? Um, Because he f- – just because? I think so. I think he really is is driven to entertain. Okay, I you know it. I think he's yeah. really driven. To and he think he's they're trying to think of the most entertaining thing. All right, I get freaked out when I see those fights. They blow my mind because I get scared for my friends. You know what oh. I mean? I, I get I get scared for you when you're in there. I get scared for him. When I, and he made me sit in the, on the corner with him one time when he was fighting. I mean, like he had like nine, ten fighters that one that one year, right? Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, and we'll see you next time. All right, that's about it for this episode of This Life. Check us out at KBC, be in uh, Lawrence Vaughn, 790 Midday Live, Talk Radio, Monday to Friday. You can also tune in every day live via the magic of the internet at kbc.com. If you miss it, we've made it simple for you to find all the shows at drdrew.com, the Adam and Dr. Drew podcast, the Think One I Do By Myself, the Dr. Drew podcast, This Life, of course, with Bob Swole Patrol, Mike Cantho, and his new health and fitness podcast. You can uh, find us on Twitter at This Life Podcast, at Dr. Drew, Dairy W, at Rehab Bob Forrest, and of course, our lovely producer at First Lady of Love. I think I know who that is. If you love this show, please subscribe and tell a friend. We appreciate it when you do. We'd love to hear your feedback as well. Send us a message. Join the email list at drdrew.com, drdrew.com slash contact. You'll also get a weekly uh, email from us on that. Uh, while you're at it, at doctor.com, please support our sponsors by clicking through the banners. We only advertise products that I can get behind. So thank you for supporting them, those that support us. And thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.